Welcome to the Trophy TV. It's my three things. Everton three, Doncaster Rovers nil at Goodison Park tonight. Everton into the third round of the Carabao Cup. Good victory for the Blues. A clean sheet, three goals, a debut for uh, Jake O'Brien. Good to see James Garner and Seamus Coleman getting it over an hour uh, tonight as well. Good to see Roman Dixon and Harrison Armstrong getting on the pitch as well tonight. Uh, the goals, Tim Irabunum with a shot that's hit Dwight McNeil and gone in. Uh, and obviously Illiman and Dye's first Everton goal took it really well. And a first goal of the season for Beto. That'll do him the world of good. I thought he worked really hard, Beto, tonight and deserved that goal. Irabunum, for me, has been a, a huge plus this summer. He really has, I thought. He got better and better in pre-season. I thought he's he's done okay. In, I thought he's done well in the opening two games. Less effective at the weekend, but still was trying to get on the front foot and trying to get himself about. He's learning all the time. He is only a young boy, of course, uh, 21 Gone into a new team, come from Villa. I thought he's done. I thought he's done well in our midfield. And the more games him and Adrisha Garner Gay play together, ironically they swapped tonight, didn't he? But the more games they play together, I think they'll do better and better. Um, and I think just the confidence of him. And obviously, okay, I'd love it to have been his goal tonight because I always think that's a great first start for him to to get his first Everton goal. Hopefully that'll come in the Premier League. Hopefully it'll come on Saturday. Uh, but I think confidence-wise, it'll do him the world of good. And again, as I just said on the, the match reaction, I haven't looked at his numbers, but to me, he was a huge plus tonight. I thought he was Everton's best player. And that's really good. Now we need others to follow to follow that lead. Nilliman and Dye's got his first Everton goal with a lovely little turn and nice and direct run of people. Get more shots away, Illy. Um, and take your goal and Beto again, like I said, get himself a goal and off the mark. I want to start with Beto. First thing tonight, like I've just said, I thought he toiled away up there. Does some really good stuff. You know, good control at times, pulling it down on his chest, uses the power. And then other times, the same ball will cause him massive issues. It'll bounce off him. But I do think what he does well, he gives the defenders something to think about. Now, OK, sometimes he plays the defender, not the ball. And I think, I don't know who needs to tell him that. And I'm, I'm sure Steve Stoney and Wong Sean Dyche have all told him, you know, it's great, you know, getting contact with the defender and knocking him about. That's fine. But get the ball under control first. Look after the ball and then initiate the contact. And sometimes he does it the other way around. They were manhandling him tonight, of course. They were and he held his own quite well. Some lovely little round the corner flicks. Not really seen much of that from him. I think what we have to do with him to get him the most out of him if we can is get balls in the channels to him and also get balls around the corner for him to run after because he is a handful. He's not lightning quick, but he's not slow either. And I think the Dom thing uh, will come obviously to a head in the next 72 hours till deadline is shut. I think there's obviously lots of rumours swirling around now. Chelsea and Arsenal, very interested in him, according to different sources. We'll see whether there's anything in that. We don't know, of course. Um and that obviously leads Everton on to having to get another striker if Dom goes out the door. And I just, I look and I think if it's, you know, David Datro Fafan has been mentioned from Chelsea as a possible replacement for Dom. Uh, Breuer has been mentioned all summer, but it looks like he's they've sorted their differences out with Ipswich now and he's going to move there. So he'd be off the table. For, you know, Fafana, I think he got four goals for Burnley in the end. He's a different type of striker to Dom. And therefore, the reason why I'm talking about Beto there is we may need to start him on Saturday if Dom has gone. If Dom hasn't gone, it's obviously he'll start at the weekend. Um, but if Beto is to start, we're going to have to refine what we do a little bit. He's not as good in the air as Dominic Calvert-Lewin. There's different aspects to his game where we have to play differently with him. We might get more out of him. So it's going to be interesting that. But obviously the goal will do him a world of good tonight. The 90 minutes will do him the world of good tonight. Obviously a week ago he scored a Tramier in that, uh, you know, the EFL trophy or whatever it is. He got two, almost had a hat-trick, but Martin Sheriff nicked one of them. Um, and that'll have done him the world of good. He's only had sort of like 15 minutes against Brighton and similar to Tottenham. So if we do have to rely on him at the weekend, that 90 minutes he's got in the tank tonight will help him. 
that's in that's in the hands of the club and Dominic Calvert Lewin and what happens with him. But I thought he did well tonight and I'm pleased that he's got himself the goal. Is he the long term answer? Who knows? But he's got himself a goal tonight and I thought that was that's a big, big positive. Uh the second thing I'm gonna talk about is our build up play, which I think is shocking at times. I think we have to simplify this. And I'm sure Sean Dyche is trying to get this solved, particularly at home. I've said it a few times away. I do think we need to play slightly differently. I think if we're going to miss the midfield out, then whoever's in the, the 10 has got to be alongside our striker and we have to be a bit more direct then, which means taking a couple more risks. Our, our wide players have got to get higher up the pitch. If it's Calvert-Lewin, great, he's, he'll win the first ball. We've got to have people running off him. But he's got to have someone up with him. We can't continue to be isolated. That's our centre forward. And I think that's something that the team is going to have to adapt to at home. Tonight, they sat in in the first... Well, they sat in in the first half. The difference in the second half was we got the goal and they had to change the way we were playing. Then gaps emerged and we started playing through them and obviously took the game away from them. But when teams do come and make it difficult for us, we do struggle to break it down. And... I think it does come down to style of play. I'm not saying we need to play like Man City because we couldn't, you know, or, or 850 passes a game and all of that. But we do have to be more refined with what we are doing. In, in, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we have to get players overlapping. We have to get players taking gambles, getting balls into the box, whether it's Dom or whether it's Beto. And then when we do that, particularly at home, it engages the crowd and that puts the opposition on the back foot. I think when we're just going back to Pickford, which seems to be our reset all the time. Sometimes you have to go back and reset. I've no problem with that. But there's times tonight where Dwight McNeil's knocking it all the way back to the goalkeeper. We did it a couple of times in the second half. It's all the way back to Pickford when it doesn't need to be. There's players 10 yards away, and I think that's where we have to remove that. Because we go all the way back to Pickford to kick it all the way back to almost where it started. And it allows the opposition to get set. And I think that's a little tinker in that. And it might grow as we, we move forward. Hopefully it will. But I think we do have to look at that. It might be. I, mean, I know the club are trying to bring in another wide player right now. Fingers crossed on that. It's someone who's a bit more with a bit more pace. And that might free something up in that wide right area. It might be able to get in behind or something like that. But we certainly need something extra when we're on the front foot at home. And... You know, that all comes down to the transfer market, which is my third and final point. Because let's be honest, by the time I do the three talking points on Saturday, the window will be shut. So therefore, I'm going to have another little moan for the next minute and a half. Uh, Everton have got to be active in these next 72 hours. Like I said, there's there's talks around Neil Mopai. I think he will go. Next 72 hours, he'll be out the club. Hopefully Everton will get a few million for him and that's him gone and that'll be back in the coffers. Mason Holgate, they're looking to, to move on. We'll see whether he's still here. Um, there's still some talk of the core, but I don't know what will happen with him. But Dominic Calvert-Lewin will be the big one, won't it? And if, that's, if that does happen, we'll see. Everton have apparently agreed the deal for Oriel Mangala, who's going to come in on loan with an option to buy from Leon. He's a midfield player. No, Sean Dykes wanted another midfield player, so that's fine. You know, we need to get him someone who he's happy with. And he knows Mangala from his time at Forest. He, he lives there and goes and watches Forest quite a lot. So he knows the player. The player's played in the Premier League for them. So that one feels like it's a fit for Sean Dykes. Fine, he'll use him. That's good. But we do, you know, look like I just said, the club are chasing a wide player uh, and are looking at options as a, from a centre forward perspective as well. Obviously, that is all dependent on Dominic Calvert-Lewin going out the door because if Dom stays, we're not going to go and get a striker, are we? I can't see a bid coming in for Beto now and I wonder whether Everton would take it anyway. I don't think they would. So, therefore, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, there's a lot hinging on him. I'm hoping Everton have got a striker lined up. Um, but they are trying to bring, like I say, a wide man in. The forward one, I think, is dead interesting. I think if Calvert-Lewin did go and Everton got, say, £20 million for him, I wonder if Everton would also bring a defender in. No, the manager is looking for a full-back as well. Trippy is being mentioned. I'm not, I don't know what will happen with that. It looks unlikely, but who knows? That would only be a loan anyway. Um, so I'm not sure about that one. But I just wonder if he'd bring in another full-back. Maybe a, 
maybe a right back. I'm not Patterson. Don't know. We'll see it. But I think it's going to be really interesting what Everton do. I think they have to do business. Mangala looks likely to happen. The winger, if we get a winger in, I'll be, you know, the look and the pace, wide areas, I'd be happy with that. The Calvert Loom ones, the one to watch, that's the really interesting one over the next 72 hours. So we'll obviously be covering all of that on Toffee TV. So make sure you're listening, watching with us, and we will have all of that news, including the Deadline Day show. We'll be doing that on Toffee TV and more than a game. We'll be covering whole Deadline Day on Friday. Make sure you are there. Listen, thanks for taking the time to watch. Make a comment, subscribe, like it, do all of that stuff. Thank you very much. We do appreciate each and every one of you, even the moaners. And I'm home as well, so we're all in together. Up the trophies, we've won the game. I'll see you later.